the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. It's the Ramble. It goes until midnight Eastern Time here on the right coast of the United States. Yes, hi, everybody. How are you? Listen, I want to apologize for something last night, and then we will go into our presentation that's going to start off our program tonight. Uh, and I, I want to say that I, I have been working with a new control board here. I've had it for about a month, but I haven't really learned it. And I suddenly learned that I had an equalizer, and I kind of played with it a little bit. But uh, I, yeah, an equalizer is something that makes things high and low, and you can shape the sound and so on so that maybe you have a high, more bass and more treble here and whatever. Anyway... What I didn't realize, there were a couple of things I didn't realize about this. Number one, the only people that are going to hear the equalizer are the people who watch the video. Those who listen to the audio won't hear it, and uh, they won't, uh, they won't uh, literally uh, will not uh, see it, okay? Uh, well, they're not going to see it because it's audio, but the audio version was just fine because it didn't go through the equalizer. But the audio for the video does. And it also goes out to the people who call on uh, Skype as well. What I didn't know is I don't hear the equalization in my ear because my ear is getting an entirely different signal. So last night when we did the Will Durst interview, when I recorded him, it was equalized. Not very good, okay, but it was equalized. When I played it on the air last night, it was being equalized a second time and sounded just ghastly. So I want to apologize for that. Now tonight I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a few things with the interview with Ronnie that I did under the same conditions. Only uh, in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tweak the knobs a little bit and, and try and, and make the sound a little better. But I'm, I'm not using the equalizer tonight. So what you're doing is you're hearing a completely unequalized uh, audio. See, I've turned up my bass so I sound really good, you know, things like that. Anyway, so um, uh, th this, is an, uh, this is the equalized version of what I did with Ronnie yesterday, but is not equalized a second time. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, by what's going out on the video. For you people on the audio, everything's going to be just fine. Don't even, don't even worry about it. And uh, while we're at it, let's get to that little discussion with Ronnie. Ladies and gentlemen, that stunning face you're seeing is the stunning Ronnie Bennett. If the names are the same, it's because we used to be married. Then we weren't anymore. Then we didn't talk for years. Then we ta started talking, and now we're the best of friends again. <laughs> which is the way we which is the way we started out you know that's true that's true we were just best friends and then you know how many years ago that was late 50s oh yeah sixty. well i don't know i always i always talk about you as somebody that i i regret that i married because i ruined a perfect friendship <laughs> you know i mean really a lot of people make that mistake they take somebody who they really get along with and they they have a real compatibility with and they think that's maybe an excuse to get married, but I think the things that in, in that are needed in a marriage are different than those that are needed in a friendship. Would you agree? I mean, you got to have friendship, but there's got to be more. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we just aren't any good at marriage. Uh, th that could be. <laughs> I've certainly proved that I'm not good at marriage. I mean, I'm on my fourth. <gasps> I didn't know it was that. I thought three. Oh, no. You were number two. I remember that. And then there was number three, mm, Susan. Right, yes. And then there's number four, Marjorie. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I just never did it again. Probably be on the, the first to be on the safe side, I should probably refer to her as my future ex-wife. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, no, I've never been there. You know, there was a wonderful moment when I used... When I worked for Barbara Walters Specials, yeah, 
we were interviewing, she was hardly ever interviewed in those days, Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. And we were doing it at, it's now gone, it burned down, yeah. but that western town out in New Mexico where they shot a lot of western movies back in those days. Mm -hmm. This was back in the 80s. So we go there and she's, they're making one of those old westerns where you wear those, you know, big, the girls wear those big dresses with the big skirts and, mm -hmm. and tucked in waists and all of that. And of course, I mean, she's Elizabeth Taylor, so of course she was two hours late for the interview. And um, one of the questions we'd done, because at that point she had been married, I don't know, six or seven times, I think, maybe eight. Mm -hmm. And so the question was very, very simple from Barbara of, but Elizabeth, you've been married eight times. And Elizabeth's answer was wonderful. She said, but Barbara, I married them all instead of just sleeping with them. <laughs> well, uh, maybe she would have done better by sleeping with them because they, they they didn't last, you know. No, no. Yeah. Well, she tried Burton twice, didn't she? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, she, tr she tried Burton twice. I think that was maybe her most successful marriage in a strange way, you know. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. I don't have to remember those things anymore. I used to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just uh, figured it was not time for me to, to do that, you know, uh, uh, to to give up on marriage. I kept trying it. I, as I put it, I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. <laughs> and are, have you done that now, finally? Uh, uh, Be you know, careful. Who, where's Marjorie? <laughs> uh, I know she's listening to this. And the way I would answer that is probably she'd probably answer it the same way. We look at each other every now and then and just say, so it's come to this, huh? <laughs> you know, we're at an age where divorce is never thought of in this relationship because it's ridiculous. You know, more old people, according to statistics, are getting divorced than used to. Really? Yeah. I don't know why at this point. Why Why? why suddenly at, at, at 80 do you want to be separated from the other person who's like, you know, 76 or something like that i mean come on you know it, it, you can just wait for one of them to die you know i mean well as, as i say i wake up every morning and i say well what is it today that's going to get me you know what is going to you know you, it, you spent your whole life with this type of i got a pain in my back i wonder if that's age. some kind of terminal disease i've suddenly got let me tell you about terminal disease. Yeah, well, uh, you're 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 the textbook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the reason she's wearing a turban, by the way, is because uh, well, uh, she doesn't have any hair left because of uh, the chemotherapy. Um, would you say now after the chemo? I want to. I kept thinking about this because sometimes. My wife will say to me, well, you know, if uh, what was hap what's happening to Ronnie happened to me, I probably wouldn't go through, you know, the chemo and all of that. I just let myself go, you know, and say, that's it, you know. And uh, so I'm wondering, is the chemo worth it, you know, compared to the quality of life? Okay, here's what I think about that. Because I'm sure you've asked yourself that question. Well, long before it started and since yeah. then, too. And uh, I, um, w when I have the chemo, I have a f six hours of chemo infusion. And then I wear a body pack for two days for more at home mm -hmm. uh, that more is pumped into me. And for those two days at home, um, there's a little bit of side effect for the first day. But mostly I'm okay. Then when they unplug me, mm -hmm. um, that's when I start to feel the side effects. And it's mostly tiredness. And I can do a certain amount of things, but I have to take a nap or I have to rest. And rest usually means lying down, which means I usually fall asleep. So you lose a couple of hours. But by if I have, I have chemo, the infusion at the clinic on Thursdays, every other Thursday. And I'm pretty well back as much to normal as I've ever going to be um, by today, by Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, and that leaves me another... 10 days of being pretty much okay. I mean, I'm not the girl I used to be. I'm very slow at things now. Um, and I just had to learn that things take twice as long to do. But my kind of deal with myself about this 
uh, and the time will come, is that when the side effects or the effects of the cancer or both of them together take away daily good living mm. for most of the time, then it will be time to go. Yeah. But so far, it's not anywhere near close to that, right? Mostly I have good days now. But, you know, that will change at some point in the future. Well, you know, I mean, um, who knows how long this chemotherapy is going to keep you going? You know, I mean, you, you, a couple of months ago you were saying, oh, God, I'm depressed, I'm going to die and all of that. And now you seem to have a little bit more hope that at least you're going to be around for a while. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, you um, don't have an expiration date is what I'm saying. I, yeah, I don't know what that is, and, and nobody does. Um, it, uh, as I said, when I have, when when the hard times, the bad times, the side effect times are taking up more of my life than a few good days, then it will be time to go. By the way, just this morning it was announced that the state of New Jersey has made physician assisted suicide legal as of today oh good then uh, then and it will go into effect later this year um and i will certainly take care of that um i will take care of it that way when the time comes that i've been describing uh it's you just don't know when it's going to be because every there's no predicting that the advance of cancer everybody is different whether they're have the same kind of cancer, the same kind of chemo, or whatever they're doing, um, it's still going to affect each person differently. So, you know, as long as I've got good times, I like being here, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, of course, you you know, you, you fight it, but I, you know, you just wonder, like, you know, how much potchking around do you want a doctor to do before you say that's enough? Oh well, yeah. as I said, I, I explained when it's when there's more bad times than good times, it's over. Yeah, for me. But you, you know, know, the people uh, don't feel that. What way. Marjorie was saying is she wouldn't even put herself through the chemo. You know, some people don't. It depends, and I'm terribly lucky on the chemo. This is a rough chemo, and a lot of people who are on it have a lot work more and and stronger side effects than I've had so far. And I don't know why that is. I just thank God, you know, I'll take it. I like this. <laughs> I like it this way. You like it this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 it changes your life entirely. I mean, there's takes up, first of all, I'm only at half speed on everything, and that's never going to come back. Um, and there are things like counting out pills and remembering to take them at the right times. That's really irritating. I'm not very good at that, and I have to put signs up and remind myself all over the place. Um, there's, It's very difficult because of my breathing problems for something as simple I've done all my life is change the bed. It's really hard to do, yeah. and I have to stop and rest twice while I'm doing it. Do you do any things for exercise, like taking walks and things like that? Very, very short ones. It's very difficult for me to breathe, and even at a slow pace. So I do you know, the best I can. Wow. And is, is the is the breathing from the chemo? The breathing is from the cancer. Okay. And possibly because I smoked for so many years. Right now, they're doing some tests and thinking about treating me for CPO, COPD. Yeah. And so we're in the middle of figuring that stuff How out. How long right did now. you smoke? Because Pardon? I know you started me smoking. I know. Do we have to go through that again? Oh, yeah. I'm going to remind you of that. Newports. I remember it was Newports. And I was so into it, I not only got the, bought the Newports, I bought the Newport lighter. I had a Newport lighter that I lit my Newports with. I was a new smoker. And it was because you were a smoker. How okay. long did you keep what smoking? What do you want me to do? How, how long did you? I'm the one with CPOD, COPD. Yeah, I know. How long did you smoke, though? I don't want to talk about that. Well, well, I mean, I wanted, I'd like to know because I'd like to see how much further than me. I, like, I only smoked for 20 years and then I quit. Oh, I smoked much longer than that. And no. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that the smoking might have anything to do with, uh, with the cancer in your lung? Or do you think it was more? Sure. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah, you but... know, I mean, if it, it's, it's not just your lungs. Cigarettes aren't good for anything. But you remember when we were teenagers... It was a very glamorous thing. Betty Davis smoking on the, you know, 
and and Joan Crawford and Betty Davis and I said that um, Betty Grable, all those movie stars when we were very young, all of the movies they all smoked cigarettes, very sexy, and that's how we grew up. And nobody was going to make a big deal. It was even at that time was the first announcement that they had found that cigarettes are terrible for you, but nobody really made a big deal of it, and nobody believed it in the beginning. Wow. Yeah. I uh, um, I don't know. I, one day I quit because I was on the radio, and somebody came by, and they said, we want to test you for, you know, your lungs and all of that, you know, uh, on the air. And I said, oh, okay, fine, you know, what the hell. Now, I, like any smoker, you kind of believe nothing's happening bad to you because... It's progressive because disease. you're young and it doesn't show you know, yet. You know, you don't get r- the negative results of smoking for something like twenty years. Okay, so they tested me and my breathing was down. Mm-hmm. And I said, I always said I would quit smoking whenever I was proven to me that something was going wrong. Mm-hmm. And so I did it, and mm-hmm. I quit smoking. Uh, and I was delighted that I quit smoking. And I, I one day I just said, "That's it. I'm going to quit." I remember Good you, you. <laughs> you and I quit. <laughs> Not once. that easy. For I everybody. remember you and I in Chicago. I think we quit, and it lasted for what three weeks or three months or something like that. I remember the birth of kitties in Chicago. The birth of cats. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but what I'm saying is, in Chicago, we uh, we, we we quit smoking. I think for something like like three days or something, uh, three months, three weeks. And and I thought we had it made, and, and we had a cigarette to see if we had it made, and we then we're smoking again. I so, think that you can't ever go back, or at least I can't when you stop. I still, not very often, but a couple times a month, I still crave a cigarette, especially when I'm trying to write and I'm not getting anywhere. It's time to stop and have a cigarette, you know? Well, no, I, I never desire a cigarette, but here's how I, here's how I quit, mindset I put myself into when I quit. I, uh, I didn't say I'm going to see uh, if I can, qu- I'm going to quit. I didn't say I'm going to quit because then you're putting a, a barrier in front of you. But I said, I'm going to see how long I can go without smoking. And, and you're still here, huh? and, I'm, and, I'm, and I haven't smoked <laughs> since then. And I think that's the way to approach it. You know, don't approach it like it's a wall you have to climb, but that it's just a little task. You want to say, how long can I go without smoking? And I've so far, it's been, what was that, 1990? No, 1982 that I quit smoking. And you're still waiting to see if you can have another cigarette. <laughs> Well, you know, if tomorrow I found out I had something terminal and I was only going to live like six months or something like that, I think I'd start smoking again and try heroin. You know, I mean, all the things that they said were terrible for you, I think I would tr- go out and just try. You know, I want to go out in a puff of smoke. That's what I want to do. Right? I don't know. Well, I mean, Definitely. what were you saying about the advantages of, of having a terminal disease is that there are certain things you feel don't bother you anymore. They're inconsequential. Oh, well, you know, I'm never going to exercise again. <laughs> You're right. Every moment of it for God knows how many years. Yeah. Every morning of my life. I just, I just spy. you know, you get up, it's a brand new day, and now you have to go do something that you can't stand. So I don't ever have to do that again. Yeah. I can eat Anything I want. I need to keep my weight up. It doesn't matter what I eat. And when I complained to one of the oncology nurses that eating all this fat and protein is not how I've been eating for the last 15 years and it's not very healthy, she said, Ronnie, keep your weight up that the um, cancer will kill you long before the diet. (laughs) Well, that's that's true. Uh, But, I mean, I feel that... um, uh, I don't know. Would I quit? The, uh, you know, I've always, you know, you know me. I've always been dieting one way or another uh, because I first found out, I used to be, remember I, when you first met me, I was a really skinny kid. I mean, almost to the point of scrawny. All right. Most then, people get thicker as we get And when we were in Houston, Texas, I hit, I think, 28. And I suddenly realized I had gained 15 pounds. <laughs> and, and then I suddenly realized if I don't do something about it, I'm going to have a weight problem. And so for most of my life, I've been on some kind of a diet or another, except about a couple of years ago, we suddenly realized I was up to 150 pounds, 250 pounds. What? Yes. 250 pounds. And I 
went on a, a diet, or 245, I think it was, when I was at the doctor. And I, you don't realize you've suddenly become enormous, right? <laughs> and so I just went on this low-carb diet, and I shed, at, at the top point, about 60 pounds. I'm down about 55, 52, between 50 and 55 pounds, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so once I did that, now I'm paranoid about putting it back on because I see all these people lose weight and suddenly, you know, a year later they're fat again. But I've kept this off for the most part for like two years, you know. But it, 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 was, it was quite a job. But then here's the point I was going to make. So I went on this low-carb diet. So I ate nothing but meat and uh, eggs and, you know, all non-carb stuff. And people went, that's bad for you. And I said, wait a minute, is that bad for me? Is, or is the, the 55 pounds I took off bad for me? And they can't, yeah, they can't, the best we can, Alex. They can't yeah, come up with trying. an answer. Listen, I'm sick and tired of being told the things I've done all my life that were supposedly good for me are not, not good for me anymore. The baby aspirin I take every day. They say it doesn't do anything. You better stop taking it. What? You told me to take it. You know, your best medical knowledge told me to take it. Um, you know, and then it's... Uh, you know well, what, Alex? Yeah. You know what? What? We're old enough now that we can do anything we want. You're right. In terms of food and medicine and I'm all I'm going that. out and having that hot fudge Sunday. It doesn't matter at this point. We're going to die before a lot of other people because we're this old. I'm going to go out and have that hot fudge Sunday right now. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, I haven't had... I, I haven't had a sweet like that you know i have sugar-free sweets but that's it you know i've been you know when i was very young yeah i used and i as, as soon as i hit puberty i started having a weight problem mm -hmm. and i spent my entire life losing the same 10 or 12 pounds over and over and over again and i used to mock tall skinny women who would complain about how hard it was for them to keep weight on mm -hmm. and i would mock them because they had I spent my whole life trying to keep weight off. Right. And now that I need to keep my weight up so that I don't fall into frailty, um, I, all of a sudden I understand those tall, skinny girls. I have, I work really hard to keep my weight up, and it goes away really easily. Well, we had a friend once who was a model who put on like five pounds, I think, and she was having a hard time finding work. Because they want yeah, them Mary. so, yeah. yeah. They, they want you want remember her name. I didn't even remember her name. She just she had to remain skinny and scrawny. Yeah. You know, uh, they were drapes for the dresses. Is really what they were. <laughs> you know, that's got to be a horrible life. Just got to be a horrible life. I remember she was kind of not happy about it. I don't remember the details. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I do remember? And I, I, I keep telling the story about we were living up in uh, up in Riverdale. No, not Archie and Veronica's Riverdale, the other Riverdale, the one in New York. And there was this woman. I, was there. I thought theirs was there. Huh? I thought Archie and Veronica was that Riverdale. No, it wasn't that Riverdale. It was a town Riverdale called Riverdale, not a not an area called Riverdale. Okay. okay. But anyway, so we so we uh, and and. In the building with us lived the uh, head of a major television network. Or no. The, the, one, the one we worked for. The one we worked for. And uh, he had a wife. And she, one night she came down drunk and she was pregnant. And she uh, started moaning and crying. And then I, I she started jumping all over me. Okay, and I kind of pushed her away. I was, I remember looking at you like, no, I'm not getting involved here, you know. And then she went after our friend Michael O'Donoghue, who was there that night. And I have no memory of this. And she went, she went berserk on him. She's all over him, right? And then she's saying things like, uh, uh, out of, she, she was on a soap opera. And she's saying things out of the soap opera like, love, what does he know of love? <laughs> you know? And finally, you and Michael dragged her back up to her apartment because she had almost passed out and deposited her at her front door. 
right? Which is the reason I think I lasted at ABC so long is because of this little favor we did to the boss, right? <laughs> but Michael O'Donoghue had spent his whole life writing parody, right, for Saturday Night Live and for the National Lampoon, mm -hmm. said to me, Jesus, I thought all these years I was writing parody. <laughs> Because this was like something out of a bad soap opera, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what I remember about Riverdale. That's, I remember another kitty birth. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We have more cats because... <laughs> well, I often had a joke about you. I said, uh, first, she, first she spayed a one male cat. Then she, you spayed another male cat. And I said, I got rid of her before she got around to me. <laughs> I did you really? Oh, um, but I think you don't spay a male cat. I think that. Uh, that's excuse me, cast, uh, castrate, uh, uh, neuter, neuter. Yeah, but we you didn't you didn't do spay any of the females. I don't have any memory of this outside of how many well, kitties. and that's there. what I hold against you. Then try and come back at it. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't remember. Do you remember when they got ringworm and we had to try to put the salve on them every day? Every cat, a whole passel of cats, I think two cats had kittens at about the same time, and they all came down with ringworm. And we had to put make them take these ringworm pills, I think. And so it was like an assembly line where you take the cat, open their mouth, I throw the pill in, then you close the mouth, and then, of course, do the tickling of the throat so they would swallow. And then it's the next cat and the next. We had to do this for like three weeks. Yeah. This was, it was ridiculous. Well, that, and that was our marriage, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Neutering, spaying, and, and uh, giving pills for ringworm. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, because but the reason we were we had to cure them of the ringworm is there was no way we were going to get rid of these cats unless they were cured of ringworm because they were all kittens. And then every time we go out somewhere, you'd ask whoever we were having dinner with, "How would you like a kitty?" <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> yes, and I remember once you said that at, at dinner with Abby Hoffman and Anita, his wife. You said, uh, uh, "Would you like a little kitty?" And Abby, without even flinching, looked back at you and said, are they good to eat? Oh, jeez. you got a better memory than I. That's a great line. <laughs> well, I remember it because Abby was always had this ability to get right to the core of your being. And when somebody says, do you want a cat? You know, you know they love cats. So you go, are they good to eat? You know. Hey, we've oh, run out of, well, believe it or not, on this, this is a second pass for us. But uh, uh, I think it, it worked this time. At least I hope so. Uh, and and uh, th I've had fun with this one. This has been a lot of fun. Yes. And the one we just recorded, which didn't complete recording, I may run anyway at some point and tell people it ends fast. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, it's called Time Goes By is her blog, timegoesby.net. And it's Ronnie Bennett, and it's Lake Oswego, and you're looking terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, there she was, Ronnie Bennett. Oh, boy. Okay, all right. I'm having all kinds of little problems tonight. Like, for instance, my machine here says there is no Internet connection, and yet, the program is going out. Everybody getting it just fine? I imagine you are. Anyway, let me just close this down. Let me... I just wish the rest of you would do the show tonight instead of me. Uh, <laughs> I It just... You know, I, I had this problem yesterday with the sound on uh, Will Durst because it was double equalized and it sounded just ghastly. And then I had to, you know, make a... Uh, make excuses for it at the top of the show tonight. Uh, in case you didn't know what I was talking about, I, I, really what happened was I, I did a thing, an uh, interview, and it was equalized. You see, for the people who are watching the TV, you're listening to a signal I'm not hearing in my ear, okay? Uh, I'm hearing what is coming right off the board, if that makes any kind of sense. And so if I were to start equalizing this, uh, and put it so that it wasn't bypassing everything, 
uh, uh, I can't hear the equalization. So I didn't realize how badly stuff was being equalized when the thing was playing. So uh, I know that doesn't sound like a hell of a lot to you and you don't understand what the hell I'm talking about, but uh, that, was, that was what went on, okay? Anyway, I'm sitting here now waiting for people to call. Also, I look down here and I got a little thing on my, it says, uh, it says no internet on network three, but I'm not on a network three, so I don't understand what that's all about. I, it, it, on network three, there's no internet. Eh. Huh, I don't understand it. Uh, uh, the picture's going out okay tonight, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, it's going out just fine. So apparently I do have an internet connection, whatever that means. I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, uh, it's all starting to be a big mystery to me. Uh, and and not and not an easy mystery to solve, a, a, a vexing mystery. Um, and then last night, I you know I, every night I, I have some kind of problem when I get off the air, and that causes me no end of grief. So anyway, hi there, how you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, couldn't get to sleep last night. Uh, oh, wow. Well, when you have problems and you're trying to solve them, and then all of a sudden now it's time to go to bed, <laughs> you're not going to bed. So then you have to take a pill or something to put you to sleep, and that's the way it's been almost every night. I'm sick and tired of putting out technical fires, you know, and I have no idea why this thing says I have no internet connection on this computer, even though you guys are getting me through this computer. So. I must have an internet connection, so I'm going to pay no attention to it. Anyway, then I'll try to fix it later, and that will fuck up the whole thing, and then I'll be up all night again. So, it's driving me nuts. Hey, gremlins in the machine. Ghosts in the machine, they say. And I'm sure the audio of the show is, for most people who are not listening to the uh, audio on, if you're listening to audio on the internet, that's one separate feed, Okay. Uh, and that's why it sounded oh good. If you listen to the audio-only version of this show last night, except for the first half hour, it sounded terrific. But uh, the rest of the, but if you watched it on video, it was terrible. And on top of that, um, the rest of the show didn't sound that good either. And it's probably been that way for about a week. So finally, I have now fixed it so that everything is fine. Does it sound good to you, Phil? Yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah, uh, you don't take the show and put it through. Um, uh, what's that Adobe program that uh, uh, we got that uh, changes the audio? What do you mean it changes the audio? Well, you can you can tweak the audio. Well, and, yeah, uh, I can always it. I can always tweak the audio. Yeah, but I don't do that. I don't go through Adobe on this. Uh, no, I know, but uh, you know, I mean, if you. You wanted to, you could. I couldn't go back and retroactively clean up uh, Will Durst's interview. If you want to hear it somewhat cleaner, I've got it on my Facebook page by itself. Okay. Yeah. And, and there you can hear it a lot better than it went across last night with what I call double equalizing, which yeah. just trashed the sound horribly. Well, I'm, I'm listening, uh, you know, I'm listening to you on Skype and it sounds fine. Yeah. Oh, it's got to sound great tonight because I'm not, I'm not equalizing it. If I were yeah. to punch in the equalizer, then people out there watching, yeah. you see, the thing is people listening on the audio only don't have a problem mm -hmm. because that's coming directly from the board into my computer that encodes. All right. Now the equalizer you're talking about is the one in your board. The equalizer, the one that that I that you're hearing, the signal you are hearing right now, okay, yeah. uh, is uh, coming off the off an, off the board itself, off the main output. Yeah. All right. Where mm -hmm. the other one comes out of an uh, an a USB output. Yeah. All right. There and one is clean, and the other one. I can put through the equalizer. I can put through a lot of different things, but I choose not to. Who the hell is that? Ryan. Oh, it's somebody calling from an e earlier show. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's not the way you call us. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a fresh connection. You have to have a fresh connection. You understand, folks? Fresh connection. Uh, let me see here. 
Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I think it's Brian Neary that's calling. Brian it says uh, incoming call from Brian Neary. Really, Brian Neary? Yeah. Who's Brian Neary? Uh, it's the friend of mine who called the other the other night. The new guy. Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, he's 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 not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I mean, I um, in fact, let me let me let me do something with your sound because I want to have you guys sound better. I had to tweak this in order for Ronnie to sound better, but now now I've got you sounding better. Um, all right. Yeah. Yeah. See, folks, you can hear that he's a lot more bass and all of that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, uh, no, so, uh, so it, you know, it, if it isn't one thing, it's a fucking another here. Yeah. What, what happened last night? Uh, no, it was that the, the, the interview with Durst sounded terrible because I had, I had done him with the equalizer on. And I couldn't mm -hmm. hear that the equalizer was on because my yeah. earphones go through don't go through the main mix. My earphones go to whatever I don't know goes out to the board gives you yeah. yeah whatever the board gives me, and so I couldn't hear that that was happening. So I was recording him equalized and badly equalized. I mean I just had these things yeah. askew. I didn't wasn't even paying attention to him, and then when I played it back on the air on the video because the video uses that same signal, it was double equalized. And that's why it sounded so shitty. And why yeah. the rest of the show didn't sound so great either, but it sounded especially shitty. So. <laughs> what parts didn't sound great, mine? No, you know, the, the talking part was okay. We did all right yeah. last night, you yeah. know. Well, we won't sing. We won't Nobody sing. sing. Nobody, Nobody will sing tonight. Nobody will sing. <laughs> Uh, but it was, it was, it's just, it, you know, if it isn't one thing, it's another. I'm getting to the point where I just go, oh, God, you know? Yeah, well, you, you've made it pretty complicated because you keep adding uh, features. Yeah. And, uh, you know, rather than the original, which was Skype and it just was audio. Like, I don't understand, I really don't understand this board. I mean, there's just so much stuff in it. And I, that's one of the things I didn't realize that the signal you guys are getting. I mean, yeah. if I wanted to, uh, uh, I, I could kind of show people what I mean, is that if, let me turn up uh, all the stuff on the equalizer, turn it up and do a few things down. Now, if I punch in the equalizer, I can't hear the difference for you. Yeah. See what I'm talking uh, about? See what I'm modulated. And, and people heard that uh, if they were watching the video just now. All of a sudden, yeah. the audio got worse, and that's what it was. And so I will never use the equalizer again. No, you don't, you don't have to. Uh, I think what's happening is is you had two things coming in. It was over-modulating. Uh, with, with my board, I can actually control it uh, on my computer, and I can get much... A, a lot more stuff. Good. Have fun. Um, I can't afford that fucking computer. That fucking. Well, board, you may okay? you may have all of those features no. and just not realize no, it. No, I a downloadable program. No, no. It, so if you go to the website, I'm saying Mackey's no, website. Phil. No, there's no computer. There's no computer uh, uh, access interface. No, there's no computer interface. Um, well, uh, and, and you know something? I don't care. <laughs> you know, well, but you can control. I just, all the you know, I just want. That you like, can't. No, I don't want to. I don't care about the equalizer. I really don't. You know, it was a good show. Yeah, I that doesn't. No, it was the show sucked last night. Um, uh, uh, oh yeah. I but, like the equalizer. Yeah, but all I'm saying oh, is, I, is that that uh, I have no use for the equalizer. I'm not doing music. So I don't yeah. care about that. And if I do do some audio and I do need to equalize it, yeah, I can go through a, a, a Adobe and equalize it in whatever way I want. But live, I just want a good, nice, pure sound going out. And that's all I care about. With my old board, my old board was perfect, except that when yeah. I got this new machine, I really needed to be able to do that kind of input. Here comes your friend again. Uh, yeah, let me, let me go get my phone from the other room and I'll, I'll write him. Uh, I'll be yeah, right back. Write him and tell him that he can't right. do it that I gotta way. Get, I okay. gotta get the other phone. Right. Jeez. Anyway, hello, Jeff. How are you doing? Pretty good. Yeah, still Pretty down good. in Georgia, I see, because you have that uh, same picture in back of you. That's right. And yeah. today, 
It's going to be, well, tomorrow I will be coming home. You happy and about I'm, that? I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> are you, are you happy about that, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I, I can only take so much vacation. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I found that the my limit is about three weeks. You know, uh, now if I went somewhere to live for a while, that would be a different story because you unpack, yeah. you put stuff away, and you you move in, right? But when you're just going somewhere like to Europe or whatever, and all of a sudden one day you find yourself. Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, you're you're in one town one day, and you're in another town the next day, and you're moving here, and you're going there, and da 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 da. It drives me crazy. Just drives me nuts. Uh, why don't you just call him, Phil? Phil? Phil, can you hear us? He ain't got his yeah, earphones. He doesn't have any well, then we can say yeah. things about him. Listen, you piece of shit. Can you hear us, you piece of shit? You fat fuck! Come on, piece of shit! Oh hi, yeah, we were just we were just talking about you, Phil. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I I gave him the uh, the thing. I, I told me he needed to use a fresh Skype connection, not from history. Use contacts. Yeah, yeah. He says okay. Gives me a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Now we'll see if he can if he can call. Oh, now, but then he's not a friend, so I'm gonna have to then do a whole thing there. Oh, well, God. he's a, a, a Facebook friend. He's, no, that doesn't that doesn't count. Uh, yeah, we we know we know a couple of people. Uh, he had commented on one of my posts and uh, one of the shark pictures. Yeah, and um, you know, and I looked at him because I didn't recognize him, and, it, and he was a friend of John Diagostino. And I said, "Oh, and you?" So I said, "I wonder what the connection is." So, yeah. Yeah. We chatted a little, and that was that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's fine. But now he's not calling, see? So. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, he's probably trying to figure it out. Yeah, take your earphones off again so we can say things about you. <laughs> well, you can say things about me with the earphones on. No, it's you know, fun. You're 3,000 miles fun. away. Go back and watch the replay. You'll hear what we said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, um, son of a bitch. I'm drinking coffee again tonight. I won't go to sleep, you know. Mm. Tea. I'm a teetotaler now. Really? Pretty soon I'm going to be hot. Water what I've been having women. trouble with today is is this uh, site, this torrent site that I go to, is mm -hmm. not coming up on my computer. It's not coming up in my browser, unless I go through the VPN. But if I go through the VPN, everything is slower. Then, you know, like yeah. when I tried to upload the programs that were just on, they took forever to upload. Where when I'm not on VPN, it goes. Bzip, but, you know, the VPN allows me to see uh, certain clips and videos that aren't, a, aren't available in this country. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you know, just benign stuff. But, you know, it says it's not available in this country. So I log in from the U.K. and I'm able to see it. Yeah, well, that's nice and that's fun. Mm -hmm. But you got a problem with that. Because what happens is the, the, if it's, it is slower. Like when I tried to get on to, when I was trying to upload stuff to the server, yeah. it was very slow. You know, because it was going through some other server well, somewhere. Then pick, pick a different server. You know, uh, no, it depends I, on which I, server you uh, pick. Here we go. This is Brian Nearing. It says, add to group. And I just added him to the group. And there he is. See? I seem to recognize that picture. So maybe I, I do remember. They sure there's yeah. Brian Neary. Hey. Of course, I remember. I just hey didn't remember. I just didn't remember Neary. That part of it. This is the straight Brian. The straight Brian. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last night. Last night the other Brian called. So uh, it's Bizarro Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to call last night, but I knew you guys were probably going to talk about politics a lot, and then uh, so then I, I checked in a little bit later. And, and we were ear alerts, uh, blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Just shows the variety of the show. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I I like to equate everything. When somebody gets too, how can we call it, cloying to our president, I like to say they're giving him a blowjob, because <laughs> because I honestly believe that Donald Trump 
compliments are better than a blow job. <laughs> hey, Alex, do you, do you remember what you used to say back, back in the days about how you knew you weren't gay? Well, I knew I wasn't gay because I had tried it once. No, you used to have a joke. You used to say you had bad gag reflexes. Oh, well, that, that too. <laughs> that too. Well, no, I see. Here's the thing. Uh, I, I, I have been blown by a guy. Okay. Yes. Uh, and that happened at an orgy that I was at. And somebody started blowing me and it felt very good. And I looked down and it was a guy. And I went, well, here's my experience now. I can find out what this is like. <laughs> And he kept doing it, and it was he was good at it. I mean, after all, I mean, wouldn't we be good at it with each other? We have the equipment. We know how it works, you know. Um, and so uh, I let him continue until I felt stubble. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, that's enough. And I said, thank you very much, but, you know, I, I would rather put this in something than or somebody, a female mouth than a, than a male mouth, you know, whatever. I was very nice about it. I didn't want to hurt his feelings. But I okay. felt that after that point, I had had the experience. In other words, I knew what it was like to get a blowjob from a guy. But then I thought, I don't know if I could be really gay because I don't think I could give a blowjob, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and when we talk about gag reflex, I mean, I would just gag a um, <laughs> thought of doing it, you know? Yeah. But because, that, that's one thing that stuck with me over these years. Yeah. Just live on five days. <laughs> hey, listen, if if guys could really be polyamorous and if guys could just say to hell with it, uh, I don't care who I'm blowing or who blows me, we'd have no need for women. <laughs> uh, you know. There's a joke. It's uh, if women uh, didn't have a pussy, there'd be a bounty on them. I heard that one. I, I never liked that. That's sexist. Of course it is. <laughs> what I said wasn't sexist. Uh, as far as you're What I said is absolutely true. <laughs> you know? and, what's, and what's the dog joke? Or, or, or dog I, got joke? A, I got a better, a better thought about that. If guys could actually have sex with other guys and enjoy it and not feel any guilt about it or feel, you know, hey, I'm gay or whatever, then women, I think, would be a lot nicer to us. <laughs> because to, to begin with, there'd be more competition. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So. <laughs> That's why they invented vibrators. Is that why they invented vibrators? Yeah, uh, for, you know, for women, so they have to deal with men. Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, you know, I, you know I, was, I, I was thinking about it the other day. I was thinking about love, you know? I mean, how many times in your life have you truly fallen in love? And I can't tell you how many times I felt like I was in love. That I had that wonderful, romantic inclination that, oh, my God, I love her. Okay? Now, sometimes that was, you know, disappeared after the first night with them. Uh, or, uh, you know, I mean, I remember one woman that I went with. She was... Uh, I can't remember what she did for a living, but we had we had this romantic relationship that started out just being like she I she was I met her two days before she was supposed to go back to California. And so we made the best of those two nights. All right. And then the day she was supposed to go back to California, I went to a doctor's appointment. But she knew I was going to. And when I came out of the doctor's appointment, uh, I said uh, to her, uh, wow, what are you doing here? And Because she was there. And Didn't she I said, meet her? No, you never uh, met in her. In your apartment I in don't, New York? I don't think so. Uh, she, it's the one who was on the album with you. Uh, no, no, that was Naomi. She was a cunt. Naomi Page, that's She right. was a cunt. Anyway. Uh, she uh, was going to Boston in two days. Well, that was, another, that was another situation like that. And had she never come back, it would have been one of the greatest nights of my life. Mm. But it turned into one of the worst things that ever mm. happened this to me. This girl was beyond sexy. She was so pretty. Uh, definitely. I don't know if she know, was pretty, but she was well, sexy. Well, yeah, she had that, she was that blonde kind of, you know, free spirit and great body. Yeah, oh, well, that's another story. But let me finish this story first. Yeah. So this woman... Says I decided I didn't want to go back to California yet. I want to be here with you, and we went back to my place, and the love making was wonderful, and just it was just 
everything about her just absolutely oozed love and my feeling towards her oozed love. And it was a couple of days later and she's on my floor looking through a bunch of record albums that I had. And I looked at her and I thought to myself, you know what? I can't stand her. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. But love sometimes is short lived and sometimes it goes on forever, right? Uh, the, Naomi was a perfect example. Uh, she, I, I met her at a recording that we did at uh, WPLJ. There was a concert. We recorded these concerts and did them live. And then they were recorded by their record companies, and they would put them out as records. I think this. Were those the it, ones in the park? It, it might have no, no. It might have been the Allman Brothers. We you know we did it in a regular studio, okay. Mm. And and um, uh, I saw this woman across the room, and uh, she was stunning, blonde. I'm not really a big blonde fan, but she was blonde, and she was. Uh, she there was just something that oozed sensuality about her. And I just went, wow, I wish I could go out with her. But, you know, what does she want with a guy like me? The next day I'm home, the phone rings. She says, hi, my name is Naomi. I don't know if you remember me, but I was at the recording last night. I said, which one were you? She says, oh, I was the blonde one wearing the big furry coat. And I went, it's her. This is the woman I have the hots for. She said, yeah, I saw you, and I really wanted to get to know you better. And I went, okay. She says, can I come over tonight? I said, yeah. She comes over and she walks in with two suitcases. Now, you know, you don't start off your first date by walking in with two suitcases and a guy. Uh, and she said, oh, my friend's just helping me with the suitcases. I said, what are the suitcases for? Like, you know, I'm sorry, I want to get to know you before I ask you to move in with me. She said, oh, no, I'm tomorrow I'm moving to Boston. So that night, you know, the kind of love you make when there's no tomorrow, yeah. all right? And uh, we, we make love all night long, hot monkey sex. She, I take her down to the railroad station. She gets on the train off to Boston. Well, I guess I'll never see her again. Next thing I know, I get a call from her. And there's another call, and we talk back and forth. And finally, I'm going to Boston to see her. Uh, and and that's very nice. And then I come back, and all of a sudden she calls me, and she says, you know what? I don't like it here in Boston, and I'd rather be with you. I'm coming back to New York. And she came back to New York, and she moved in with me. And it was the worst relationship I have ever <laughs> had in my life. It was hell. It was a living fucking hell. If you want to see proof of it, go back to the uh, National Lampoon Radio Dinner album. Look in the center of it if you have the double fold, and there's a picture of me with Naomi for the for the ages. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I uh, uh, I just it was the most. I can't tell you how miserable it was. It was so miserable the woman wound up in Bellevue. Okay, this is how miserable the relationship. I remember was. Uh, six or seven in the morning when we went back to the apartment. She was yelling out the window at the taxi noises <laughs> and, you know the the, the yeah. cars yeah and, oh yeah, she, uh, yeah. But uh, she makes great eggs i i can't remember to tell you the goddamn <laughs> truth you know it's well, the, if, I, if i was in the room and naomi was in the room i'm sure you'd only remember naomi the particulars <laughs> of that relationship i prefer to forget you know yeah. all i do remember is there were moments the real high moments you know yeah. uh and um she, um, uh, but but it, it it turned out to be so horrible that had she never come back from Boston, it would have been the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. And I'd be sitting here saying to all of you, you want to know the best night I ever had in my life with a woman? And I would tell you that story. And I would never have to tell you more about it. And I would never have to tell you how terrible it turned out. Okay? So, you Alex, know. Hmm? Was, was there, I remember another story back, back in the days, <clears throat> he was talking about another girl from National Lampoon, I think, one of those girls, the big, big girls. Oh, well, that was, you, that, that You was, actually got with uh, her because that, that, you complimented her ass, right? It was, yes, that was, um, I'm trying to remember her name now, but if everybody remembers the photo funnies in the National Lampoon, 
there was always this woman uh, who was, you know, <laughs> huge. Well endowed. Absolutely. I'm trying to remember what her name was now. I used to always remember her name. And uh, we had an affair for a while, you know. Uh, and the way it started, you're absolutely right. You remember the story. She, I, I, she, was, uh, she came by, I think, uh, maybe I was at Screw Magazine, and she dropped by or something. And I, I said to her, uh, boy, you got a nice ass. You know, which today would get, which today would get me thrown out of the broadcasting business. But you know, back then you could say it. I said you have a really nice ass. When she had these enormous tits, and when she walked into a room, that's all you looked at. In fact, that's all you could see. I, I often said that she walked into my apartment, and the tits came in about five minutes before she did. So the uh, the augmenting what what size did they uh, end up being? Did you know? They, they weren't augmented. Those were no, augmented. those were natural. Those were natural. Oh yeah, when, I mentioned that when I had sex with her, it was like two B fifty two bombers coming down at me. You know, um, uh, and, and and it wasn't on a fat frame either. That was right. the other part about it. If you ever get a chance, go back and look up uh, Photo Funnies. I'm trying to remember her name now. <laughs> Jeez almighty. I can't remember them. I'll, I'll, I'll look up her name. I probably, if I look about big big bosom, bosom girl and Photo Funnies. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, uh, woman with big boobs. Woman with okay. the stories you remember from 30 years ago i guess right boobs <laughs> oops boobs national lampoon lampoon photo funnies i'll just throw that in it was photo oops photo funnies uh, i think it was p-h-u-n-i-i-e-s okay let me see here photo funnies are back Boob memes. Danielle. That was her name. <laughs> Danielle. Uh, uh, here it is. Danielle. National Republic. Here she is. Oh, there. I don't know if you can see in back of me, folks, but that was her right there. Uh, uh, yeah, we can't see the screen. Only no, part of it. Off the yeah, her yeah. name was her name was Danielle. Yep. 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 Everybody just look up National Lampoon. Danielle National Lampoon. You'll see the pictures. <laughs> you'll see exactly what we're talking about. But anyway. All right. See you. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for bringing back that memory to me, uh, um, Brian. Kevin. Brian. Stay Brian. Brian. Uh, yeah. Uh, because I uh, amazing. Some people remember my life more than I remember my own myself. So, yeah. you know. Uh, but Danielle was a very nice lady, by the way. She, I really liked her. She was a nice person, and uh, we had a we had a nice we had a brief uh, relationship. Um, I I won't uh, you know I even had I had an, I'll tell you I had an affair with a woman. I don't want I don't want to particularize this because then it might get back to her, and I don't want her to have somebody telling a story that she doesn't want to have told. But yeah. you know how they use a lot of women as announcers on these award shows? Mm. Well, she is one of those women. Uh, and uh, I, had, I had an ongoing relationship with her for about a month. She came into town to work the radio station I was working at. And um, uh, actually, the boss uh, brought her in because he came in from Chicago. And uh, I guess for his own amusement, and somehow we kept getting together at the hotel. Uh, she went off at 10 o'clock at night. I went on at 2 in the morning. And between 10 and 2, we did what we called the such and so-and-so show, the two of us, you know. And every time I hear her on television announcing those award shows, uh, I, 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 I just kind of smile, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, she, was, she was another nice lady, too. She still is, actually. Um, and, so uh, when you're watching the show, what do you say? Hey, I hit that. <laughs> no, I don't do that. I, <laughs> you know, uh, what was it? Wait, there was somebody. Wait a minute. There was somebody who uh, just recently I realized that I had an affair with that showed up somewhere. Uh, when I say an affair, you know, it might have been a one night stand. It might have been a couple of weeks, you know. Um, 
but there was somebody, you know, oh, 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 there was somebody, there was this documentary that uh, Alex, uh, Alex Gibney did on this woman who started this uh, bi biological company, this uh, company that turned out medicine, and then they found out she was a phony, and she wound up in jail. And this woman who I'd had a relationship with is one of the people talking about her. Oh, yeah. was that the one where they tested the blood and... Uh, I, I can't... Theranos. Huh? Is it Theranos? Theranos, Wait, they just Theranos. did the documentary. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's in it. <laughs> this is that one I of know. your competitors or was one of your competitors, Brian? No, but actually I interviewed with them and I met Elizabeth, who's the yeah, her and Sonny. Yeah, actually, it's a good documentary. Didn't, wind yeah. up in, didn't, right. she, didn't she wind up in prison? No, but she's banned. She's barred from from everything medical wise but yeah what they were doing is they were taking blood samples we take dna samples but they're taking blood samples and they had like a, a they had a, a box that had everything to try to do testing like that and but if they're actually doing so blood samples i'll tell you you're breaking in and out of us uh, uh yeah it sounds like your microphone is you know, partially it, disconnected you, or something no you know what i think it is i think it might have to do with the uh if you go into uh, what are you using using a mac or using a pc pc go up into skype and and, and there's a place where you can adjust your microphone and and uh -huh. turn off automatic yeah, so you go into preferences, Skype preferences. Yeah, uh, at least on a Mac, and then uh, uh, audio, uh, and and you'll see something that goes across like a line. And yeah, well, it's like to push, I'm afraid to push the button that people have been pushing and clears everybody out. <laughs> oh, no, it's up in the top corner usually. Top left. The yeah. Yeah. The trouble is, this is the new uh, Skype. And it, uh, I don't know where it is exactly, but there's something that must say preferences or whatever. Is there something that says preferences? No. Yeah. More settings? More settings. Try more yeah. settings. Try yeah. more settings. Is there something? Test video or test audio speakers, microphone. Here. Microphone, yeah, microphone. Thing, yeah, is there a thing that you can uncheck that says uh, auto, uh, auto audio or auto, auto level? Yeah, but it's not highlighted. Yeah, well, now you sound fine anyway, so I don't know yeah. what the problem is. <laughs> so. so she was just she was taking the samples and saying that her her system was checking it, but they were using another system by Siemens and verifying it from there. FDA went in there and did an audit and found all that stuff out and busted her really bad. So I, I have some friends that work there, and now some people who work there work at our company. So. And, and she, she wound up in jail, didn't she? She wound up in prison. Uh, I don't think she's in jail. I'm not. They they sort of ended it just with her validating what she was doing, which was still. I had a hard time trying to watch the documentary because she has such a weird voice. Yes, yes, she did, and she yeah yeah yeah. Her and Sunny were very interesting. So. Wow. So you were you knew you knew what that was all about. You were right there. <laughs> yeah. And I saw some people that I knew that worked at my comp our company and went there and then <laughs> there's some people there that I saw in the movie on the, the documentary. So So yeah, and they kept creeping us out with the pictures of her face. You know, they kept zooming in on her face yeah. and eyes and stuff. So it was very strange. But Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they did that story originally. I remember seeing it. I think on sixty minutes years ago. They they did a piece on her. Yeah, maybe a lot of pieces. A lot of people were doing stuff on her because you know, Stanford, you know, Stanford uh, dropout and a big deal. The people she had behind her, Kissinger and you know, Schultz and everybody. So it was pretty crazy. Wow, well, Ed wow. Schultz was part of it, huh? Uh, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. Not Ed. <laughs> Wait, didn't Ed die? Ed Schultz died, didn't he? Yeah, he died. Yeah, because yeah. I, I remember there was a day I I, I breathed a sigh of relief, uh, mm -hmm. and because uh, Ed was dead. Uh, so is Zed, huh? So Zed. Zed's dead, <laughs> man. Ah, boy. But um, uh, no. So uh, thank you for knowing more about my life than I know about my own life. <laughs> Uh, it's just Brian. those things that stuck in my head. So, so when I was younger, coming out of high school, where were you? Were you, you were here in New York, right? No, San Jose. San Jose. In oh, California. oh, okay. 
All right. So how did you know about the National Lampoon lady? Did I talk about her on the radio in San Francisco? Oh, I yes. did. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, but the, so out of high school, I actually worked with Ansel Adams' daughter. And her granddaughter was taking over the company, doing all the prints yeah. and, and cards and posters. Mm -hmm. And so that's at her at our company there. We By the way, in case people don't know, let's tell people Ansel Adams, maybe I'd say the greatest photographer, nature photographer ever, ever he invented the zone system. Yeah. 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 Spe especially then because you didn't have, you know, filters or anything. So a lot, a lot yeah. of stories I heard from his daughter. And so we used to blast Live 105, and especially in the morning, listening to you. So her granddaughter, or his granddaughter, yeah. uh, we're, we're about the same age. Uh, we used to go to the Breakfast of Bennett's, and so she was a big fan. So her being my boss, it was very easy to disappear on a Friday to go see you. So, Oh, yes, okay. A lot of, oh, lot, a lot of fun back then. Yeah. So. yeah. I was going to say, but you then ruined it, Phil. I was going to say, uh, did, she ever, did the two of you ever get zoned out? See, because there was a thing called the zone method that Ansel Adams Zone used. system, yeah. Zone <laughs> system. You know, before there was breakfast with Bennett, I used to go to breakfast with Bennett. And we, we'd go to the bagel place, and whoever was on the air that day, yeah. had Camel. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, and, and what's his name that owned the uh, the uh, bagel place? Uh, he used to comp it all the time. Yeah, well, no, I had a, a deal there where he would uh, comp anybody I brought in. So I would yeah. bring in 10 people at a time, and he would have to give us all bagels. But plus, yeah. we plugged them on the air for yeah. in for compensation for, to give us, you know, lunch, breakfast. So after the show, we would all go to the Stuffed Bagel, was the name of the place. And we right would go, chestnut. We'd go over there, and we would all sit around. And it was like a uh, Algonquin round table, if people know what that was, uh, for, for comics, you know. And... and uh, you know, one morning, for instance, I remember Jay Leno there talk, uh, holding court because he loved to hold court. He loved to tell other comics how they could improve their acts and their lives, you know. And he uh, did all right. He was okay. And they, and Jay, was a, <laughs> Jay was a nice enough guy at that time, you know. Yeah. Uh, he made a few shackles. And, and some of the people, I mean, Feldman and Bubbles would be out of control sometimes. Oh, yeah. And those guys, you would lose the show because those guys would just keep going. And then you had Ruben in there at the same time. And well, you, 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 you actually think I lost control of the show, but I never really <laughs> did. Uh, uh -huh. I, I knew how to control chaos. Mm, uh, sure. And on top of that, I, I had the, 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 the uh, uh, control board there. I could turn down any of those mics I wanted to and start talking, you know. Um, but it, it, I learned that, you know, I'm going to be there tomorrow. I got the mm -hmm. job. Uh, they're coming in, I, to pro usually to promote their gigs. Uh, and if they're going to be funny, and if they're being funny, then let them go. Because why did you invite them to come by anyway? To be funnier than yeah. they are? No. Yeah. And, and I, there was a great lesson I learned by an interview with, uh, of all people, Steve Allen, who I'm not a big fan of. But he said in the interview, he said, what I learned was I was going to be there tomorrow. I had the job. When that comic came on, my job was to make him look funny. Mm. In other words, if at that meant shutting up and letting him go, or when he stopped being funny, jumping in and being funny myself. Sure. And he said, there's one other thing. This was the other thing I learned, and I used it to, I'll use it to my dying day. The job is not to be funny. The job is to be fun. Mm. You can't be funny all the time, but you can be fun all the time. Mm. And that, that I think, was... Uh, Steve Allen was absolutely right about those things, and that's why he lasted so long. Uh, Do you have any recordings from back then still? or No, but you know what? I just got... I have this person uh, who has been sending me uh, audio tapes that they collected over the years of uh, me at WPLJ in New York. Mm -hmm. And what they just sent me, I'm probably going to run it in a week or so, is an interview I did with, of all people, Marcel Marceau. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very talkative guy. Very talkative. Very talkative. 
But he, I don't this think pers- I've ever heard his voice. <laughs> to begin with, he has a thickly French accent. Uh, but no, I, that's what I found that, uh, and uh, he found that this person found that, and uh, a lot of other stuff too. But that one, I really the other day, I just absolutely <clears throat> was listening to it. I was just awed by it because when did you ever hear an interview with Marcel Marceau? Yeah. Wow. And yet, uh, and it's funny. Uh, Jack Garfine, my friend, the director, and and um, uh, who's not too well right now. Uh, Is he still in the hospital? He's back in the hospital. Um, he uh, he was good friends with Marcel Marceau, and we were, he was talking about Marcel Marceau, and I said, "You'll never believe it." I said, "But I interviewed Marcel Marceau <laughs> when he came to New York," and he said, "Oh," and I because I mentioned, and I think you'll hear it if I ever play the interview. At one point, he says, did anybody ever tell you, you look like a young Albert Einstein? That's what I remember him saying to me. Uh, But um, uh, I suddenly realized that uh, Jack had this poster of a um, performance, I can't remember where, in New York by Marcel Marceau. Um, And it was signed by Marcel Marceau on the poster. And I said, that was the date I interviewed him. You know, that wow. was when I interviewed him. He was in town to do that um, that specific uh, a gig. Uh, and so uh, to suddenly come up with the Marcel Marceau interview, I just went, wow, you know. So I thank this person for sending me all the stuff. I mean, sent me stuff of me talking the night that Nixon um, resigned. Okay. Uh, a show with me and Abby Hoffman and a whole bunch of... Let me, let me look here. I have, the, I have, a, I have a, a file called Old Alex here, a folder called Old Alex. Uh, Abby Hoffman and Bill Graham. Yeah, uh, a Bennett on Nixon, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 Alex Bennett's music hits. Phil Oaks. Um, uh, let me see here. Brother Theodore. I don't know if anybody remembers Brother Theodore. Uh, but anyway, it's just a lot. Lance Loud. Wow. Remember Lance Loud? Do you know who he was? Yeah. Remember oh, the Loud family, yeah. an American family? It was the first reality show ever done. It was done on PBS. Yeah. And they followed yeah. the lives of this family, and Lance was the gay son in the group. And he uh, and uh, it became a sensation because on the show, the wife decided that she was so pissed at her husband that she was going to tell him on the show while they were filming I want a divorce (laughs) (laughs) and the show became a real sensation if you ever get a chance to go back and see any of them they were wonderful (coughs) Bree is calling us from who knows where in the world Bree is calling us from (laughs) where are you Bree I've been Dubai back in Dubai Back home. Yeah. Back home. <laughs> Back home in Dubai. There must be a where we are getting rained and flooded out. Really? Oh, wow. oh well, yeah. What are you getting? A quarter of an inch, which is the yearly rainfall. No, flood? that's what she said. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Does it rain a lot there? Or? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, historically no, but in the last three years, yes. Uh-huh. I mean, I've literally seen it change. Yeah. Wow. It's, uh, if I showed it to you, let me see if I can show it to you. It gets a little noisy when I go out there. I'm up again because I have new neighbors upstairs with little kids, and they. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get used to their schedule. Uh, uh, Alex <laughs> wanted them to move above you so you'd call in more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got your wish then. There we go. There's, there's, the, there, there's our boy from Beirut, our man in Beirut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to uh, reverse the camera, but not having well, much luck doing it. It's showing your curtain, uh, so it, it did work. Uh, yeah, so it did work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Hey, mm. d- you got to realize something. <laughs> I've, go I, I've learned something in the last couple of days, Bree. Nothing works, okay? <laughs> Nothing works. I have, a t- I have a torrent site that's been down for a whole day now. And um, uh, uh, I can get it if I go on VPN. I can get it. 
But if I try to get it off Verizon, I can't. So I don't know what it is, you know. It's going through AT&T on my iPad, but it's not going through AT&T on my iPhone. And I've been sitting here trying to figure the whole thing out and finally just decided, eh, fuck it, you know. I, I don't want to be on VPN all the time. It's too damn slow. Yeah. When I was in the airport, I would go use the VPN. Uh, you know, just when you're on those public, uh, in public areas. What, you're I, you're I afraid a somebody's idea. going to find out about your life and steal it no just credit card numbers you know it's like like but let's like larry bubbles brown once said to me he said uh identity theft hey i don't care i have no life let them <laughs> no, let them not have one you know yeah, we use vpn for when we're working at home to log on to company stuff yeah 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 the, it, vpn folks stands for virtual private network what is it i have no fucking idea it's just i bought it it <laughs> hides uh, your address and allows you to Suppose put one on from yeah. someplace else, yeah. even in the well, U.S. What it, do, it does, it goes somewhere else and uses some other uh, IP, uh, IP, address. IP address, which is your, every one of you out there with your online whatever have an IP address that's specifically yours. It doesn't have your name, but then it, it resolves itself into gabnet.net or resolves itself into you know, Brian or Phil or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the problem with it is, is that that uh, uh, when you're going and using another one of these, and you can use them in any number of countries. I mean, I have it so I can, I think, use a, a VPN in China. Um, Uzbekistan. Yeah, places like that. Uh, and it's especially, a lot of people like to use it because if they want to watch videos on the BBC, they won't let you watch them here. If you go to BBC, they say, you're not in this country. You can't watch it. So you then go use your VPN and go to the VPN in London, and then you sign on to the BBC and watch anything you want to. <laughs> uh, so that, that's what VPN is, really. Uh, but it, the trouble is, it, it's, it, I have a very fast throughput here. I have Fios, and it's fiber, and I've got almost a gig up and almost a gig down. I mean, it's that fast. And when I went and did um, VPN, slowed everything down, you know. Uh, so, uh, and then some things don't recognize you, and you have to re-sign into that thing, and it's it's. It can uh, get it, you have the same one I do. For instance, uh, if you look at United States, it'll say fastest, and this one it says France fastest. There's another France. What do you, well, you got? Nord, do you have Nord? It's fastest. You have Nord. Mm -hmm. Nord. Yeah, Nord. Nord VPN. Yeah. Yeah. You know the the one with the yeah yeah Nord Nord yeah, yeah. so but I mean um, um, so anyway I have this torrent site I use and the thing's been down at least coming here and they say they're having problems but I I didn't know they had problems that were specific to one area but not to another um, I you know all of this technology is starting to just wear me down mm -hmm. it's, 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 you too Charlie yeah me too. Yeah, every day. I'm just giving up on it. Yeah. So that does that mean if you're worn down, you want to talk about Michelle Obama's second in command getting Jesse Smollett off the hook uh, in Chicago? Uh, uh, you can talk about whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'm sure you want to. Well, uh, the, on the news today, mm -hmm. it's uh, the uh, the assistant. Uh, to Michelle Obama when she was in the White House mm -hmm. uh, is also in Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, contacted this gal Kim. Uh, she she's mm -hmm. like the Attorney yeah. General. Yeah, in, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're familiar with it. Yeah. Well, what's the point you're trying to make? Well, I'm just saying that uh, you know it was Michelle Obama's what, assistant. What does it have to do? What does it have to, to what, what does it have to do with Michelle Obama? It was her assistant. No. What does it have to do with Michelle Obama? Well, Michelle Obama was close friends, I guess, uh, I was told uh, in, in the news, uh, with Jesse Smollett. Michelle Obama was friends with Jesse Smollett? Yes. Yeah, and what newscast did you hear that on? Uh, whatever was on on the radio. It was oh, probably... Uh, uh, what? Who? The KGO affiliate. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. 
I think it was 560. Oh, oh, oh you're talking about KSFO, the conservative radio station in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah, well, I could stomach the and, other one. and the person who's on that station is who? Uh, well, it could have been Alex Bennett if... Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Who is it? Who's on that station? Uh... Uh, several, is it, you know, is it well Mike, known. Is Michael Savage on that station? Uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Bingo. Bingo. But it wasn't him that that, uh, oh, that put the oh, connection. Oh, it, it was some other uh, some other uh, uh, fake news person. Yeah. Uh, that's the real news. Yeah. The, the fake news had been going on for the last two years. All I heard was that this was a woman. President. All I heard is was a woman that worked for Michelle Obama. It wasn't done under the direction of Michelle Obama, and uh, um, we'll find that out. Yeah, I mean, but there's, there's going to be a big investigation of this thing because everybody thinks it. It, they don't think it stinks. I mean, let's face it. Uh, it's it it's it, it has so many um, similarities to the Trump deal. That, you know, to have that happen twice in one week is like, you know, amazing. The only difference is Trump didn't do it. Oh, really? Yes, he did. Yeah. Oh, yes, he did. Anyway. You know, Charlie, you said, you know, uh, you know, that said that definitely there was no collusion, but you said there was a, a obstruction. Now, many people are saying, how could you obstruct something that didn't exist? If there was you no collusion, no, 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 no. You can obstruct justice. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 just the uh, just the firing of Jim Comey could be considered if you wanted to if you wanted to parse it as as an obstruction of justice because he didn't want Comey on the case. It was Rod Rosenstein. Rob Rosenstein. My que that our question is: Why do you obstruct justice? If there isn't something you're afraid of, because he didn't. But Rob, no, no, Rosenstein, he, he wouldn't have had to obstruct justice if he hadn't. Done Rosenstein. It. By the way, there's a lot of stuff coming out today that says that we're not hearing all the Mueller report, and that when we finally do, there may be some stuff in there that is not so good for the president. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's some salacious details, you know. Uh, but um, the, you know, as far as what he found. Uh, and the results of what, what he, found. he found about Russia. How do you obstruct something that no, you didn't do? Uh, no, but you can obstruct. Uh, you can d obstruct justice more than just in that case. You can do other things to obstruct right. justice. Well, you cited Comey, and well, I uh, cited Comey as an example. Right, but uh, wasn't it Rosenstein uh, who is still there mm -hmm. uh, in the in the and 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 came to the same conclusions as Mueller? He was the one that recommended in his letter to Trump that uh, that uh, Comey be fired. Who did? Rosenstein. Rosenstein. Whatever his name. Yeah. Who was who? Who could possibly have gotten uh, uh, Comey's job if Comey was gone? Oh, he didn't get, uh, get it. Uh, yes, he did for a while. Uh, yeah, but uh, he wasn't. He wasn't put in, in there position. permanently. But who? Yeah, who admitted that he? Wait a minute. Wait. Your, yours is breaking up now. Yeah, Charlie, you're breaking up for some reason. I don't know. You know, things will clear up. Don't worry. It's just the internet. It doesn't. It it'll it'll clear up. Look how well Brian is looking now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's because he's going through on his VPN, the uh, Trump News Network. He's using that VPN. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To, to broadcast the show. But anyway, so, uh, you know, I mean, all I'm saying Charlie is. Charlie can give us a second shot. At what yeah, yeah. Just, there's still more to. Uh, and still, and uh, Bree wants to say something. To yes, Bree. Oh, okay, Alex, Alex's waiting room. Yeah. Um, the, the last uh, month or so, every time I go to sleep, uh, my neck hurts when I wake up. Now, I have like probably seven different pillows, but my neck constantly hurts. And the only time I get a good night's sleep is if I rub Tiger Balm all over the back of my neck. Oh, really? Because my neck's been killing so, me. My neck's been hurting me a lot when I sleep. Yeah. Uh, is it? Do so, you think it's musculature, or were you in an accident? I think it's because I spend most of my day in front of a computer, and uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, sitting in, yeah, sitting. Try rolfing. It worked for me. 
Uh, you know, I, I went to a rolfer. It's very, very deep massage. It's extremely painful while they're doing it. Well, you know what I do? I take an ibuprofen at difference. night because what happens is I have a tendency to crick my head on the pillow. And uh, uh, that, you know, and plus, I, when I get through with this show, Phil has been such a pain in the neck <laughs> <laughs> that that Tiger Bomb and Rolfing combined wouldn't get rid of it. Uh, you know, uh, I, I Rolfing, like Rolfing works massage. for me. Uh, it's I not like massage. Uh, it, 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 well, it works. You know, it, it was worth the price of admission. The sen ever sensitive Scott Boddicker writes, nobody cares, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bree, do you have a cervical pillow? It, it's one with, a, no. you know, like it's hollowed no. out where it supports the I neck. I thought about getting it. Oh, and, 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 and yeah, Boddicker. I, I have one of those. I, I really shouldn't read Boddicker's things because Boddicker can call, but he doesn't. Boddicker writes, oh, Phil is a dotard. You don't care about it. How many times do we talk about things that people don't care about right. every day? Right. right. That's what this whole show is about. But Scott says, Phil is a dotard. <laughs> dotard. What yeah. does that mean? And then he just wrote, Phil is a rolfing dotard. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, Scott, have another drink. <clears throat> Same thing with me. Neck, neck hurts a lot. And then, then I got three small pillows. And they keep changing pillows all the time. I got three pillows. My head sort of angles not into the pillow, but out a little bit, and then I've been fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is that? That picture? Well, this. To is Alex, that I, you know, Wait, I show, occasionally I show you the people who are trying to message me. I think I got a oh. picture. I think I got a picture of if, that woman if, myself. If you buy a new wallet, that's the picture that comes in it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Facebook friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They all want to be your friends. You know why? Because they find you hot, Bree. I know. <laughs> there, it, there are probably some guy in a Russian prison uh, working working well, his computer trying to uh, get you to give him money. Real. I never even make friends out of them because then they start messaging you. You know? Yeah. yeah. Me like make friends um, with you. You know? No, these are real people. Well, no, they, they, I'm sure they were. They are real people <laughs> no, on Facebook, too. But they are also hookers. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's some 350-pound woman with that picture. Uh, you know, it, yeah. Well, I, I want to tell you um, so, uh, something that's a little interesting here, and that is that uh, we get um, – Dubai is kind of like Manhattan in a way, like or New York was viewed when I lived in Pittsburgh. People always thought, like, well, I can always go to New York because I'll get a job there and, you know, I can make it there. <laughs> and so everybody at some point in time thinks they got to move to New York or L.A., right? So that is the same for Dubai in this region, much in the same way that it's Singapore and Southeast Asia. So anyway, you get a lot of, um, in New York or L.A., you get a lot of, I mean, look, Nicolas Cage married, uh, I think he's marrying again, but remember he married several years ago to the Korean waitress. Uh, waitress, right? So, okay, so if you understand that, then you would sort of understand Dubai. You have a lot of waitresses, but they don't even get a job waitressing. So they come here and they have three months in which to find a job, any job, some kind of job. And during that time, I've noticed that they try that there are some who are looking for free rent and they're looking for somebody who can take them to dinner or to a movie and you know it's it's as, it's as simple as that uh, now some of them do still have their dignity their pride and you know they'll go out to dinner they'll go to a movie but they won't do more but then there mm -hmm. are those who want the free rent and will go and do anything. So well, I, I just they, yeah. In Dubai, don't they arrest women uh, who do that kind of stuff? You know, um, uh, what uh, isn't there a well hooking? Yeah, definitely. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, sort of escort type thing. By the way, here well, I, I'll show you guys. There's Danielle. Oh, that's a, who's that? Uh, that's uh, Danielle. Uh, he was talking about her the other. Can you mm -hmm. see her uh, earlier? Um, that was Danielle from the photo it, funnies. It's it's a gray area. Yeah. I mean, you know, to some degree. 
You, it's you, a gray you, area. I, now, I, I don't know yeah, if should I show allowed, it to the audience. You're not allowed yeah. to uh, look up photo funny so folks. You'll see them. You'll see you're them. You're not allowed to go back to their room or whatever. Like, yeah, that's mm. you're right. That is illegal. Yeah. Um, but going out to dinner or a movie is not, you know. Yeah. Is not a. You think I'm going to spend a thousand dollars taking a woman out to dinner in a movie just so I can shake her hand good night? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what Bree is saying that these women just want a dinner and a movie. Uh, oh, and, really? You uh, really think that? Uh, you really think that? Uh, well, that's what he said. Well, that's what they're it's saying. A range. It's a range, Alex. There's a lot of people out there in the world. You know? Well, no, I had a friend who used to like to go to the Moonlight, like to, me to take him to the Moonlight Bunny Ranch so he could go hire a woman for seven fifty an hour so he could just talk to her while she was naked. You know, some everybody has a different uh, thing they like to do or want, or whatever. You know. Yeah. Uh, are those uh, are those brothels still open? Uh, you know, I haven't at, checked. Uh, I haven't checked. I was. I, it's funny you should mention it because I was thinking today about Dennis, and mm -hmm. I was thinking about whether you know the brothel, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, is still open. You know. Uh, hmm. I think that it probably uh, is still is. Yeah, you know. I mean, I. I Lamar Odom, huh? Odom ended up passed up. Was it one of those places? What? Oh, Lamar Odom. Yeah, uh, the, Lamar Odom yeah, the yeah. He, he 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 uh, he had his little incident, medical incident, at one of the it, not at, not at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, but another one of Dennis Hoff's establishments. Yeah, the one that's right outside of Vegas. I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no. And then, uh, then, uh, out of a clear blue sky, he was running for, what was it? Uh, uh state Senate and he yeah. won state Senate he, and he, he won after he died. He won after he died. Yeah. That's how yeah. stupid the Republicans are. And uh, he, oh, no, he won the nomination. I think that was for the nomination. No, he won, oh, no, he the, won seat. the seat. Oh, he won and, the seat. And the governor, I think appointed somebody to take yeah. his place. Yeah. Yeah. He beat the Democrat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it killed him. <laughs> I can't believe it. You know, I mean, I knew Dennis. I loved Dennis. Dennis was a good friend of mine, good friend to me. You know, I didn't talk to him much last year, a couple of years of his life, but he was very good to me and a good friend. And, um, uh, but I would never vote for the guy. <laughs> you know, I would never vote for him. Um, That's because you're a never Trumper. No, it didn't have anything to do with Trump. It had to do with that I knew Dennis and his abilities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he could run five brothels and keep those women in line. Well, I mean, he must be able to do something. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, know, I, you would think that's the perfect politician. I guess. I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah. What have you? you know. Would he have a couple hundred employees between the five places? Uh, I have no idea. To tell you the damn truth, yeah. um, but uh, you know, I still like to find that photograph that was taken of me at his party. I'm gonna go put some tiger bomb on my neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cervical <laughs> pillow. <laughs> I, I I still remember that picture taken of me at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch, and I wish I had a copy of it of me sta standing between Jer uh, Joey Buttafuoco uh -huh. and uh, what's his name who got his dick cut off. Uh, oh yeah, the yeah, um, uh, I forgot the uh, uh, Bobbitt, Bobbitt. Uh, John Wayne, John Bo Wayne Bobbitt. John Wayne Bobbitt. And there I, you could probably the write, photographer uh, comes along and says, "You mind if I take a picture?" And I'm going, "Huh?" And f click, and I'm looking either side of me, and on one side is John Wayne Bobbitt, and the other side of me is Joey Buttafuoco, and I'm going, "So my life has come to this." You could probably you know? write their publicists, either either or both. And yeah. see if uh, they have that photo. I, I should ask because I would love to put it up and just say the worst moment of my life, you know, the bottom, Bookends. the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of my career. Here I am, you know. Well, it's the three B's: Butterfuco, Bobbit, and Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that was missing is is that Ron like Jeremy was standing near us, but he wasn't in the picture. Yeah, you know. Yeah. The three B's. Yeah, but uh, no, I I I I, I really liked uh, uh, 
Dennis, you know. Uh, but uh, I, uh, you know, I would never have voted for him. Just because he, not because he disagrees with my politics or he's against my politics, but because I just know his abilities, and his ability is being a pimp. Yeah, well, then he's the perfect pilot. That, that, I, you keep showing us that picture. I think that's your favorite, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, Bree. She just said, did your friend her? You know, Bree. Do you want me to? Do you want yeah. me to talk to her? Yeah, friend her, and then show us what she says. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 oh, where are you from? Where are you okay. from? Okay. Yeah. All right. Are you so naked? I would say New York. Uh, yeah. Then write. Uh, are you naked? Because if I put Pittsburgh, <laughs> they don't understand that. You know, uh, well, put uh, Moscow and then she'll drop you like a hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. She's asked where you're from. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why don't you write her back hunger and see if she gets the joke? Uh, I don't think she will. Okay. You know, um, ask her where she's from. By the way, the reason why tonight uh, that one square you're watching the person is in shadow is because he's a wanted criminal, but we're interviewing him on this program. Uh, uh, what? Oh, where, what? Are where are you staying? Where are you staying? Where are you what? He, he, it's because the window is uh, is backlighting him, and so yeah. therefore well, he looks like we're interviewing him because he did. He's 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 ratting on the boss or something. Now, you know, on sixty this minutes. Is, this is uh, uh, I mean, it, it's seemingly unusual because it's seven forty in the morning here. Mm -hmm. So how this person would respond to me? I mean, they they must be like homeless or something. She's know, in she's in Harlem. She could be at McDonald's <laughs> or a pizza shop or something. I don't know. God, uh, I'm not looking like that. I'm itching like crazy, and I feel like I'm getting yeah. fatter again, but I'm not. I've only gained about three pounds, you know. Uh, oh, I'm from uh, Vietnam. I'm now, from does Vietnam. she look Vietnamese? Yeah. Uh, she does. She does. Okay, next well, thing you write her is, type. how about so that? Am, how so am no, I. No, what you write back is, how about that <laughs> napalm? No. Uh, <laughs> just, just say, wow, you're in Vietnam? No. So am I. <laughs> I already said I'm from New York. But yeah. I'm in Vietnam today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever get to meet John McCain? Write that one. Yeah. 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 I don't really have a. I mean, what am I gonna say? Oh, I'm in Vietnam. I'm what are you? What moves. are you talking you to her for moves. anyway? Aren't you a married man? Yeah. I, you guys told me to, didn't you? What to get married? <laughs> yeah. <it's> so <laughs> <late> <laughs> <us>. <laughs> Ask her if she I, saw Trump you, when he was there. I thought you wanted to know. You didn't think it was a real person, but I'm Actually, telling you these you know, it's people. very funny. It's very funny, but... No, I know they're real By people. the way, I didn't mention this. Tonight, uh, I had dinner with my dear wife because it was our eighth anniversary mm -hmm. wow. of Happy not talking to each other. Uh, <laughs> no, it was our eighth anniversary, and uh, we had a very nice dinner at a restaurant that was a very nice place, and uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was the food was good, and uh, uh, we had a very nice time, and I want to wish my honey a happy anniversary, and many more, no matter who it's with, you know, so, um, you know, I, I, I you know, just wanted to mention that. I suppose I should mention that. Well, yeah. you know, best to both of you. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Eight, eight, eight years. Could, Do you know, wait a minute. Let me think about it. Let me early. think about it. I think <laughs> this may be the longest marriage I ever had. <laughs> uh, uh, Ronnie was only about six years till we separated. Mm. And also, Marjorie and I go back further than. Yeah, she was a girlfriend. Than eight years. years. She was about another f maybe five. Besides that, so we're, we're about 13 years mm. together. Tell her to send you a live photo. I met Just her. her no, wait a minute. I can tell you exactly when I met her. I met her in 2004. So we've been going together for 14 years, for 15 years. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> wow. How do you make a Jewish woman stop having sex? Yeah. Marry her. <laughs> Marry her. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> There's one of those jokes where it says, take away their credit card. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 
So anyway, I, it, it's a, it, <coughs> you know, and so we were married for. Uh, it was like I was talking to Ronnie tonight on the Ronnie portion of our program that you know at our age, divorce isn't even a question. You know, mm. uh, it, it, because why? <laughs> you know why? You're going to go <laughs> run off with some other guy? You're going to run off with some other woman? No. You know, we're getting too old for that. You know. Yeah, so. don't, they, don't they say like the, the three phases is lust, the first marriage is lust, then the second is love, and then companionship? Yeah, I, I think that uh, that says it. I think, mm -hmm. com But I think companionship may be, this is probably the most successful <laughs> marriage I've had. You know, when I talk about reasons for getting married, and well, I can't you even settle down finally, huh? You settled down finally. Well, I had no other choice. No fuck you. Money. Age, <laughs> age made me settle down. Yeah, you know. Um, and I, you know, I mean, I feel uh, I, I spent so many of my years uh, embarrassing myself. And by that, I mean that when you're out mm. chasing women, you will do the most embarrassing things to get laid. You will. It's a TV show. The, the, uh, uh, I remember <laughs> the one time I wouldn't. The one time I was very proud of myself was the time that I was uh, going, seeing this woman for dinner. And uh, I said, you want to go back to my place? And she said, yeah, sure. And a as we're driving down the street um, towards my place, um, uh, she starts talking about uh, uh, pardon me for the use of the term, Charlie. Nigger this, yep, nigger that, that. and how about I can't stand those niggers. Now you're breaking up, right? I'm breaking Is up. Skype editing and censoring Alex in real time. Uh, no, really, <laughs> really, I'm breaking yeah. up. Censored everything. That's good. That's that wow. tape put. Anyway, anyway, it, she kept saying nigger this, nigger that, all those terrible niggers, you know. Uh, and we're driving down the Bowery. Now, I don't know if you know the Bowery in New York City, mm -hmm. but it is maybe the most, was, at that time, was the most disgusting street you could drive down because there are people at every every street corner trying to clean your window with a dirty rag. All right? <laughs> and I think, I'm think i thinking to myself, like do, you know, I, I just can't stand the way this woman is acting. This is just absolutely terrible. On the other hand, there's another angel, there's the devil on my shoulder here saying, you want to get laid, don't you? You want to get laid. It's a sure thing. You want to get laid. And the angel on the other side is going, uh, you better think twice about this. Not a good idea to take her back to your place. <laughs> and finally, I just made the, the, the decision that made me very proud of myself. I stopped the car at, a, at, a, at an intersection. I opened the door and said, get the fuck out of my car. And I left her in the middle of the Bowery with all the bums <laughs> <laughs> and drove away and said to myself, proudest day of my life. Some Finally, I made my, so, I, I ma I, no, I made, I made a decision. I made a decision that wasn't ruled by my dick, you know? Wow. Yeah, I don't know what happened to her, but I hope maybe she picked up a rag and cleaned a couple of windows. Yeah. Uh, Bree's got his hand uh, up. Yes, Bree. Yes, Bree. Uh, I, I was with a friend of mine who was going to school in Arizona, and we yeah. took his car and went down to Mexico. And turns out, you know, you have to get uh, separate insurance when you go over the border. Mm -hmm. because you know, his U.S. insurance didn't work. So anyway, we're driving down, and I've got the map, and we're trying to figure out where we need to go. But, you know, the map shows that there are roads, but sometimes a road is only like a lane of sand. So you don't know if that's a real road or if that's just a sand road. But anyway, so we end up, we're turning around a couple times, and there's this, like, horde of kids that all have, the squeegees and the, <laughs> you know, all the things. And my, so my friend's really nervous because he doesn't want all these kids coming up to his car, you know, because he's worried about the insurance and all this and that. Right. So like every time he would turn, he'd do it very quickly. So they couldn't catch us. But one time we, we couldn't make the turn quick enough and they caught up to us. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Run oh, up. no, oh, you know, oh, no, no. And then two minutes later, he's like, hey. The windshield is so clean, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he, you know, throws out a couple dollars 
to the kids. And so here he was. He, we must have spent like 15, 20 minutes dodging them when our windshield was really dirty by that point, And it all needed to be clean. And they did an excellent job. That's why they should build the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why they should not build the wall. We need them. Yeah. So, Kevin, uh, what, do you, what do you do with your life now? You're... Uh... Brian? Brian. Brian. Dude, why did I say Brian. Kevin? Ke Brian. <laughs> no beard. Brian. Straight Brian. Uh, what? Straight. Yeah, what, uh, what, the, what were you going to say? Uh, what, what was I going to say? What did I ask you? What you were I, asking oh, what he did with, what his he does with his life. Yeah. So what, what do you do with your life again? What is your, your profession? Sure. So our company uh, detects infectious disease. So like flu is huge for us right now. Um, so all the, you know, uh, everybody goes in for the flu. We have systems that check DNA mm -hmm. uh, instead of blood. So we check it. We check it within 90 minutes. You look at like TB uh, in Africa. We work with Bill and Melinda Gates oh, Foundation. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that that test that they use, the blood culture test, is about 123 years old. And with their help, some funding. Uh, our stuff takes about 90 minutes. So it's really important like in Africa because you have to be able to get the tribe. You know, when they go to tribe to tribe, sometimes they go and by the time they have the results, those people, are they can't find them anymore. So now Alex Alex needs your service. This is something, you know, all his life he's had, thinks he has this disease, that disease. <laughs> he should send you a DNA sample and uh, run it. So that uh, you know, he can see that either he's disease free or uh, tomorrow's well, we his know last I might, show. We know I might have prostate cancer, Phil. Well, <laughs> will, will will your test show that? We're doing HIV and uh, HVC right now. Get into a lot of oncology stuff now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of different stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, what were you going to say? Did you have your hand up and you had a light he, on it there, Bree? Yeah, Bree did. Yeah, I, I just I have a poor connection. I don't know why, but. Uh, I wanted to ask him if uh, do they do testing on potential employees because or expats because every three years I have to go through testing. I have to get a chest X-ray and they take blood and they take urine. Uh, do, do you do that kind of thing? We do swab. Hey, you Bree, swab, if huh? they take blood and urine and they find drugs in your system, would that create a problem uh, where you're at? Um, I would imagine so. So, so is that why they're taking those uh, samples? Hey, uh, hey uh, Georgia is getting a little rowdy. Uh, 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 no, that, that's know, Jeff's harem. That's either. Jeff's harem. They're related to each other. What are you going to do with them? <laughs> I think you ladies ought to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're signing off in eight minutes anyway. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I, I've been there 15 years. So the company started about 20 years ago. So 2004. So just like your, uh, you and Marjorie. So yeah, 2004 is when I started. Well, you lasted longer there than I lasted at Sirius. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, can I tell you a funny? I'm going to tell you guys a funny, quick little story here. Uh, but I think I, I think they found me out finally. Uh, I hadn't, since I left Sirius, tried my app on my iPhone. Because the minute that, I know the minute that Albert left the building, he got to the main floor, the front, and his, his free subscription was turned off. Okay? <laughs> I tried mine. Guess what? Still works? It still oh, works. Wow. Yeah. I've got it working on Alex. the, I've got it working on the, on the, uh, 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 Alexa, I've got it working on uh, the uh, iPhone. But the thing was, I tried it today. I, I, all of them ah, still work uh -huh. as long as I haven't logged out of them. But I logged out of the uh, on, online. I logged out of the uh, online version, and it won't let me sign back in. Now, I don't know if somehow I <coughs> changed the, uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, password Ash. to a word that I didn't, don't remember now or whatever. But... Uh, I'm still, it's still working on, on my iPad. My There's only iPad. one yeah. problem with it. You only get one show, Joel Olstein. Yeah, right. I get Joel Olstein. <laughs> right, right. I have no reason to want Alex, it. Oh, I there's your car. A boom box that works. It still works. Is that, is, is, is that a Bear Ritz? 
Ooh. So, yeah, 1957 Cadillac, chopped, and a bunch of stuff. So I cars, cars are my passion, but I got to work that? to have the money for the cars. So wow. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now you get. Do you, are you married? Uh, no, married, uh, divorced, but now with girlfriend for about five years, and we have a child together, and she oh. has two from before. So like the blended, the new blended family. But why so, haven't you got? Married. Why haven't you gotten married? Just figure. <laughs> we both have been married before and said uh, we're not ready right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, are you show? Do you show your car? Oh yeah, with with John, with yeah, John yeah, Diagostino, yeah. big shows, and I built a 1940 Cadillac LaSalle that was on the cover of a bunch of magazines. Oh, wow. and built a 1934 Cadillac right now, very right. nice. So, sure, yeah. a Cadillac man. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh wow! Uh -huh. Oh my God, you are committed. <laughs> only yeah. one. I know you guys talk about tattoos before, but that's the only one. Well, yeah. you know, if you get a tattoo that's meaningful to you, like yeah. I, I met a woman at the Olympics in Atlanta who had won the Olympics the uh, time before, and on uh -huh. her ankle she had the the, the rings, the Olympic sure. rings, yeah, the Olympic tattooed. Rings. And I said to myself, you know, when she's an old lady, that will mean something to her. You know, and with you and okay. Cadillacs, when you're an old man, that'll mean something to you. Yeah. You know, the, the Olympic uh, uh, Committee doesn't allow people to use their that symbol uh, because it's a license of, uh, of the Olympics. That's what right. if they make her take it off? Well, yeah. I have no idea, but she, they, she, she won a gold medal, so I guess she, they figured, yeah. I remember early Lay years, the Audi used to use that the those rings as their uh, yeah. as their symbol and they had to change it because I of, think they changed uh, the it to four time. rings or something like that. Yeah, like, now it's four rings four. but it used to be uh, yeah. look just like the Olympics. Yeah. No, I remember when that happened. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, there are a lot of things that are protected by law and that happens to be one of them. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, did you know Smokey the Bear is protected by an act of Congress? That you can't do a parody of Smokey the Bear without Congress coming after you? Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. Well, Congress go after anybody. They're certainly going after Trump. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah, but they have good reason. Yeah. Because yeah, he's. What does Smokey the Bear ever do to anybody? Uh, well, what do you do to Boo Boo? I remember I was the saddest thing I ever saw is I was at the uh, National Zoo, and they had Smokey the Bear there. The actual cub that had been found in a forest fire, and he'd grown up into a big bear, and he was getting really old. And down the road at the National Zoo were the Chinese communist pandas. And there was a line around the block to see the pandas, and nobody looking at Smokey. Times are tough. The commie bears won out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, re I really felt bad for Smokey, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and then Smokey died. I guess you like the underbear. Then Smokey died, but no, they, it was named after a bear that they they a cub that they found in a forest fire, and then they decided, ah, eh, let's make him a national symbol. And I remember once on Rocky and Bullwinkle, they did a parody on Smokey the Bear, and they had to take it off the air because Congress said, uh, uh, you can't do that. It was yeah. about smoke. A bear like Smokey was running around starting forest fires. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. Anyway, hey, there's our, th thank God, there's our theme song. <laughs> ah, come on, I didn't give you high blood pressure. And I only had a half a cup of coffee tonight, so. Nice call. Um, okay. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, it's been, uh, been a lot of fun, uh, but then again, I lie like that all the time. Uh, Scott Boddicker says, F serious. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it, 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 they haven't forgotten me. Anyway, uh, uh, Phil, thank you so much. We haven't hey, said really awesome. talked much about Trump. I know you started to try, but we wouldn't let you. Because uh, 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 you couldn't defend it. Uh, uh, Jeff, I, 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 are you coming back from uh, uh, from uh, Georgia soon? I sure will. I'm <laughs> leaving tomorrow. Oh, good, good. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> uh, Bree, go always good talking to you, Bree. Always like having you thank on the you. show. Charlie, great to have you here. You're, you've gone from being where's Charlie to a regular. And that's what happens when people aren't getting laid. So I'm so happy yeah. for me. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Brian, uh, come back and see us more, will you? 
I don't know how you stay. Will be a charm. I don't know how you stay friends with <laughs> Phil, but you know. Well, it's Facebook friends, but you know we yeah. chatted. And yeah, we have some. Well, just make sure he knows how to get on. I mean, I think now you will get on because yes. you are you are listed. Anyway, hey, listen, everybody, give a big uh, big wave goodbye because uh, it's time to say goodbye to the audience out there. Boy, you look at, all look enthusiastic with that wave. This is the way you should do it, like that, you know. Okay, that's our, uh, that's our, our citizen panel for tonight. Let me, let me hang up on those folks. Let me see here. There we go. And uh, I have to get it ready because the intersection is next over most of this same little outfit called GabNet, uh, and uh, then tomorrow night, uh, 9.30, it's The Exchange with Damian Chaplin, and that will be closely followed at 10 o'clock by me. Same time, same station in life at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.